Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today we're going to introduce you to Arduino. Arduino is a platform that makes it easy to tinker with technology. This family of microcontroller boards lets you sense the world around you and control electrical devices. The word Arduino refers to several layers of the circuit prototyping process. The hardware, both the official Arduino boards and the thousands of derivative Arduino compatibles. The software used to communicate with the hardware is called an integrated development environment the Arduino IDE. The programming language you'll use is also called Arduino, and it's based on C++. And Arduino also refers to the trademark of the Arduino Corporation that manufactures official boards and maintains the open source documentation that helps make the ecosystem free and easy to share. Arduino is a huge global community, which means you can find nearly infinite amount of inspirational projects, sample code, and answers to your questions online. If you follow along with this series, you'll do experiments to build up your skills and familiarity with the key concepts of controlling components with electricity, as well as coding in the Arduino language. You can find my recommendations for the parts you'll want to get started in the description, as well as links to circuit simulators you can use to practice building with Arduino without having to buy anything at all. The board I recommend starting with is the Arduino Uno, or compatibles such as the Adafruit Metro, SparkFun Redboard, or Cduino. Make sure you've got the correct USB cable to connect your board to your computer. It needs to have the right connectors and be a data-capable cable, which can look the same as a charge-only type. These beginner-focused boards have large labels to help you see what you're plugging into the header pins along the edges, which connect to various pins on the microcontroller chip itself, which is a tiny computer running a program that we upload to it from the regular computer. On the board, you'll also find a reset button, a power indicator LED, some LEDs to indicate when the board is sending and receiving data, and an LED wired to pin 13 for testing without having to plug anything into the board. The other components support the microcontroller and make it easy to wire up and program circuits without a degree in electrical engineering. You'll also need a solderless breadboard. This device has metal strips inside and many holes that allow you to connect components quickly and easily. I like to connect the breadboard and the Arduino board with a mounting plate so that my circuits stay together better. You'll use some wires to connect to the Arduino, either some purpose-built breadboard wires or solid core hookup wire works fine too. Before we get into the software, we can build a simple circuit with the program that comes on the board from the factory, which just blinks an LED connected to pin 13. See, pin 13 connects to the longer positive leg of the LED, and the negative leg is connected to ground through this resistor, which helps limit the current to prevent the LED from burning out. We covered LED basics in a previous episode if you want to learn more. But for this circuit, a quarter watt resistor, any value from 100 ohms to 1,000 ohms will work great. I've got five volts and ground from the labeled pins on the Arduino over here to the bus bars on the solderless breadboard. These bus bars run the length of the breadboard on either side, so you can easily access power and ground. For our circuit, it's not strictly necessary to use the ground bus as an intermediary connection to the board's ground, but it's best practice to connect your bus bars whenever you're prototyping. Okay, so once you've built the circuit, which you should always do with the power disconnected, you can go ahead and plug your board into the computer. Your new LED should blink in time with the tiny surface mount LED on the board. If it doesn't, double check that your wires are all connected and that your LED isn't backwards. The connections are pretty small, so it's super easy to plug a wire into the wrong row. Once your LED is blinking, it's time to dig into the program controlling it. The basic blink example is included in the downloadable Arduino software, which you'll need to install on your computer. Open it up and look under File, Examples, 01 Basics, Blink. 
All the extra symbols are part of Arduino's syntax, but don't get intimidated. It takes time to learn and write proper code from scratch. I'll break it down for you here, and you can always use the examples for reference as you level up. This first section is a block comment, followed by the code's setup, which is used to set up things your program will need later. It runs once when the program starts up. Our blink sketch setup configures pin 13 as an output, which prepares the board to send signals to it rather than listen. The main body of the program is inside the loop. This part of the code will execute on repeat, so long as the board has power. The gray text following double slashes are also comments to make the program easier to understand. The output command we're going to use is called digital write, which is a function that sets a pin high or low, on or off. To pause the program, we're using delay, which pauses for a number of milliseconds. One second is 1,000 milliseconds. So to summarize, the program turns an LED on and off at one second intervals. Let's try switching up that interval. To customize this code, you can just change the delay values, something like 500 milliseconds and like 2,000 milliseconds, and then upload the program to the board. Make sure your USB cable is plugged in and you select the board and the port from the tools menu. If none of your ports are labeled, try unplugging your board, checking the ports menu, then replugging your board and checking the ports menu again to see what's changed. Now click the upload button to transfer the Blink example code to the Arduino board. The LEDs labeled TX and RX will flash to show that the software is talking to the board. And then you'll get a message that says done uploading. And moments later, our custom Blink appears. If you're uploading to an Arduino compatible, you may need to install an additional driver before you're able to see the board in your port menu. Refer to your product documentation to see what's required. Now that you've got a digital example working, it's time to talk more about things Arduino can do. Sure, blinking is great, but it can also tell the LED to be somewhere in between full on and full off. We can program fading effects. But only a few pins on the Arduino are capable of this analog-ish output, and these pins are labeled on your board with a little squiggle or a mark. I'm going to unplug the Arduino before making any changes, then unplug the wire connected to pin 13 and plug it into pin 9, which is marked as a PWM pin. Open up the example in your Arduino software under File, Examples, 01 Basics, fade. Plug in and upload the sketch to your Arduino board and observe your LED fade on and off. The Arduino board is only capable of generating digital signals, high and low, but analog write simulates the appearance of brightnesses between on and off using pulse width modulation, or PWM. The LED flashes on and off very quickly and your eye interprets a dimmer light. The ratio of time the LED spends on versus off determines how bright or dim the LED appears. Let's look at the code to learn how this fading is achieved. I've turned on line numbers in the Arduino preferences in order to be able to better reference the different parts of the code. Lines 16 through 18 declare three variables used in the program. The setup configures pin 9 as an output on line 23. On line 29, the function analog write sets pin 9 to whatever the variable brightness is at the given time. On line 32, brightness is incremented by fade amount, which is 5. Line 35 uses an if statement to check brightness using comparison operators. If brightness is less than or equal to 0, or greater than or equal to 255. If the statement is true, the code inside is executed. Otherwise, it's just skipped. So this code increases the brightness until it reaches or exceeds 255, then sets fade amount to negative and decrements brightness until it reaches zero or below zero. The delay at the end prevents the code from running so fast that you can't see the effect. 
And the fast flashing of PWM is why you can sometimes see LED lighting flicker when you record it on your camera or phone, depending on your shutter speed. PWM is also used to allow for color mixing in an RGB LED. One LED of each color is set to different brightnesses, and when they mix together in a single package, can form any color of light. The last concept I'd like to introduce in this intro to Arduino Basics is a for loop, also called a counting loop, which counts from an initial value to an upper limit. In this program, we're counting from 0 to 255 in increments of 5, just like our LED fading program from earlier, which shows there's more than one way to write the same program. You can also wire up a few more LEDs and use a for loop to animate them. After the for loop completes its count, the rest of the main loop executes, then starts over again. I know this can all seem pretty overwhelming at first, but don't forget that you can always look stuff up online when you get stuck. The Arduino site has an excellent reference section where you can find explanations and examples of every part of the code and a community forum where you can get help with your own projects. I've put links to some resources in the description. DigiKey's got more videos on Arduino to watch while you wait for next time when we'll cover inputs and sensors. If you've got some more insight for Arduino beginners, please leave a comment and we can all learn together. Check out the playlist with the rest of the series and subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next one.